Hello, welcome back to this course on postcolonialism. I am Masood Raja, and in this brief lecture, I'll introduce you to Edward Said, probably the father figure of postcolonial studies, and most famous for his magisterial work called Orientalism. And I do have a brief lecture on Orientalism as a concept, uh, but not necessarily a summary of the book itself. Now, Said was originally from Palestine and was a professor for a long time at Columbia University and taught modernism, comparative literature, and was actually the chair of comparative literature, and that's where he passed away as the chair of comparative literature. As a scholar, I think the most brilliant book written by Said was The Question of Palestine, the first book that ever defines Palestinian identity, and it got a lot of attention when it was published. But he became most famous for Orientalism, which was published in 1978. Now, in Orientalism, Said, using Foucault's theory of discourse, had argued that the Europeans produced the Orient, which we now call Middle East, according to certain tropes and certain images, so that no matter who you read, a historian, a novelist, or a poem about the Orient, the same image comes to mind. And hence the term Orientalism, which meant that that lens through which the Europeans saw the Muslim Orient is what he calls Orientalism, and it is discursively produced through an act of discourse, knowledge, and its production. So Said, that wasn't the only book he wrote. He also followed it up with Culture and Imperialism, which also is kind of a response to Orientalism, and it traces the responses to colonialism that come from the native cultures, and eventually goes on to produce quite a few book, a large body of work. I am especially also interested in his posthumous book, which is called Democratic Criticism, because he goes back in that book to his humanistic roots and tries to explain, you know, how best to read a novel, and he uses Conrad as an example. Another important text that he published was The World, the Text, and the Critic, and that's the text which has one of the most wonderful theoretical concepts that he theorizes and talks about, and that is worldliness of the text, that texts in all circumstances exist in the world are consumed in the world and read in the world, so they should be read with that knowledge in the back of your mind. Other than being a scholar, of course, Said was also actively engaged in the Palestinian struggle for their nationhood, for their self-determination, and for some time was part of the PLO Council, especially before the PLO Peace Accords, the Oslo Peace Accords, but he eventually leaves PLO because of his differences with the leadership, but also he realizes that asking for a separate nation for Palestinians is a failure of imagination because, you know, in his view, maybe the Israelis and Palestinians could live together under one nation. So overall, while he has a huge corpus of literary and academic work, he was also an accomplished pianist, he also was actively engaged in the polemics of Arab and Palestinian politics in America and would constantly respond to the Arabists and their anti-Arab views in his writing, in his speeches. Overall, for post-colonial studies, the work of Edward Said is absolutely necessary, and if you really want to develop, you know, a good understanding of post-colonialism, I would highly recommend that you should read Edward Said, and especially Orientalism. Now, in Orientalism, the book, I'll briefly talk about it. I'll probably record a separate lecture on it. Said is using Foucault's theory of discourse, which I've explained in another lecture. But what he's trying to point out in that is that how does that view of the Orient emerge over 300 years in different languages, in different genres of literature and writing? And he uh, recognizes Napole Napoleon's invasion of Egypt as a originary moment for that, 
because what he says is, and I'm paraphrasing his words, that Napoleon doesn't just go there with an army. He also goes there with an army of experts, the geographers, the scientists, biologists, archaeologists, and these are the people who record Egypt for a Western audience. They produce huge volumes of work which can still be found. And it is that act, he says, which cannot be done correspondingly from the other side, from the side of the colonized, this power to be there, to record, to produce knowledge about it for the metropolitan consumption. And so in Orientalism, Said's project is to, to see how that comes to be, how that discourse is developed, and how the Europeans create the Orient as this exotic and sometimes mystical and mysterious and dangerous other. And the reason it's significant for us to read and understand is because it is happening right now as well. Right, if you look at the United States, a certain politics is emerging. This politics is already creating certain demographics, certain groups of people as this absolute other, this unwanted other, the immigrants, right, the Muslims and others, in order to stabilize an American self that suits certain politicians, right? And the danger there is that in the process of doing that, they would have sort of destroyed the beauty of this diverse nation called America. So Said can be useful in so many ways. In real life situations, of course, we can always ask ourselves, how am I being, viewing a group? Why is my opinion based like this? And then that will help us question, okay, what discourses of knowledge have produced that worldview that makes me see a person a certain way or have an opinion about them even though I have not even talked to them and I know nothing about it, that vision, that way of looking at others, may they be women, gays, lesbians, Africans, Muslims, you know, Arabs. Orientalism allows us to question where our own assumptions or maybe prejudices are coming from. Are they part of our educational system? Are they part of the community in which we live? You know, how have we internalized these things without examining them? So practically speaking, not just as a post student of post-colonial studies, if you read Orientalism and if you understand that our views of the other are always shaped by discourses and that we absolutely need another to stabilize ourselves, maybe we can examine our own preferences and prejudices about other people. Now, in terms of your scholarly work, you can take Orientalism and that kind of discursive way of looking at the world and apply it to any literary text. You can write a paper about any novel, Great Gatsby. Why do I sympathize with a certain character? What discourse has enabled me to internalize a certain kind of respect for a certain kind of character? How does a text represent a certain constituency, right? Why does it come across to me as naive or as bad or good? All of this then can be studied with the knowledge of Orientalism. So overall, Said, one of the leading figures of post-colonial studies, famous for his work Orientalism and so many other works, and a scholar who didn't just change humanities or humanistic education, whose work impacted anthropology, history, political science, area studies, because after Orientalism is published, everyone needs to start thinking about not just what their views are about a certain part of the world or a certain culture, but how those views are formed. So as a student and scholar of post-colonial studies, whether you are a post-colonialist or not, whether you're a student or a scholar or just a learner who is curious, I highly recommend that if there is one book you ought to read, please read Said's Orientalism. Thank you so much. And as always, if you have any questions, please send them my way and I will try to address them and I will keep adding more materials to this course. Thank you so much and goodbye.